So I feel like when people start learning D5, they usually get frustrated in trying to navigate. They just don't get it. They often do like some weird clunky moves like this and they're just like in the landscape and they get a little annoyed. So what I wanna do in this video is explain to you how I navigate. I wanna give you some tips and shortcuts. That way it's easier for you to move around, place your cameras, and you just have an overall enjoyable experience. The issue in my opinion is when you boot up D5, it opens up in orbit mode. So what that means is if you right mouse click down, right, you click and hold, you're kind of like orbiting around the project, which in my opinion, it's not great. And so the reason I don't think it's great is because you're kind of operating in this like God mode um, type of navigation system. And when you think of ArcViz, ArcViz is all about how we perceive space. And like, sure, obviously, you know, maybe you're creating an aerial rendering, you know, put that aside. Typically, it's all about being on the ground and positioning yourself looking at a project, right? So in order for me to get down, I've got to kind of like get down at this angle. It's a little weird. And now I'm like clipping into trees. And now I've got to like move and now oh, the trees in the way, it gets a little little clunky. So in my opinion, switch from orbit to fly mode. Trust me, it takes like three minutes to learn. And I'm going to show you how to use it properly because I feel like this is not a great way to kind of position you um, to get like really nice street perspective so watch this let's go over here and let's switch to fly mode so now what's going to happen in fly mode when I'm holding down the right mouse button it's like I'm moving my head around okay so now this is more natural this is more like a photographer holding the camera literally moving right so this is why I like it by default but now I actually have a finer control because now my W A S D keys open up. So W is forward. So now I'm literally taking a step forward. A moves me to the left. S brings me backwards. D brings me to the right. And then I have Q and E that open up. So now I have my height controllers. So now I can get full precision over where to put my camera. But wait, there's more, right? <laughs> not only do you get that but you also get quicker movement speeds because the movement speed opens up in this mode you actually don't have this in orbit so look when i go to orbit i don't have that if i go back to fly i can control how fast i move so how do i do that if you hold down the right mouse button and scroll up on your scroll wheel pay attention right here you see how we went from 5 to 97 well let's say you don't like that hotkey for some reason you can go right over here and these are tied to each other you see that so now when i hold the w look at that and now if i have a larger scene i can kind of zoom around much faster than if i were orbiting right so i'll give you another example let's say i want to be over here all i have to do is hold down the right mouse button w to go over here and i turn around right and now it's like again i'm at street level oh you know i think my movement speeds too much let me hold down my right mouse button, roll the scroll wheel down, right? And now I've got even more control. It's nice and slow so I can get perfect, a perfect composition here, right? So I could do something like that. So now I can move the camera around and this is great. I really don't understand how you would do this in orbit because like I was saying, right mouse button, it's gonna crank you up like that and yeah, sure, you've got like a pan when you hold down um, shift and middle mouse button, but you don't have that movement controller, that movement speed controller. And without that, you can't do precision placement. So in my opinion, stick to fly mode. I know the WASD takes a little bit to learn, but once you get over that, it's very simple. And then in my opinion, because it's, it's kind of like an advanced tool, you actually get a lot more shortcuts. So... You know, I already told you about Q and E and the mouse wheel, but did you know if you hold shift, you get a little speed burst. So now I'm at one speed burst holding shift. And now if I want to slow down, if I hold space bar and W, I'm pretty much paused. So let me add some more speed. I'm using my mouse wheel, holding space. You see how it kind of slows me down a bit and then I let go and then I speed up. Let me hold shift and a little speed burst. You see that? So. Again, that's why I like it. You get all this extra functionality. If you like completely forgot hotkey wise what I was talking about, check right down here. It's all right there. So some other tips I want to give you when it comes to placement. Um, you know, people are always colliding into things when they first start out with D5. You know, they're getting used to it. 
right over here under camera, there's this little guy called camera clipping plane. So if I get close to something, it's going to start removing it. Let me increase it. You see how it just cropped that out? So this is nice if you know, you're getting sick of like, I don't know, things <laughs> getting in front of your face and you can't work. That's what that guy's for. Some other tips I'll give you is when it comes to like getting close to objects, right now I have this tractor selected. Let's say I'm all the way over here. All I have to do is hit Z and that brings it into focus. So you could literally be out here in aerial mode, hit Z and now you're right there. So you've got that. The other thing I highly recommend is just making scenes in different areas so you don't need to keep flying there because what you'll do is when you click it, it'll move your camera there. And now it looks black because of this. So that's really nice. It's gonna save all your settings. It's gonna save environment settings, layer visibility states, and this is just a quick way to pop around your project. So in my opinion, set up a couple scenes throughout your project um, of like a perspective or an aerial that way you can easily move between the two so now i've got this nice perspective this, this uh this great little shot here right um so so just to revisit um over here just to talk about some other functionality right so this was the movement speed right this right here is your actual height so if i lower this this is another way to reduce your height personally um I feel like a lot of users get a little, little confused by this guy right here. Um, this is not the height to the nearest object. So I'm standing on top of this and it says I'm 26 meters. So that's like, it's like 70 plus feet. Obviously I'm not 70 plus feet, right? So that's not based off of your model. So your actual height can be a little confusing. So I wouldn't rely on this for placing your camera, right? So the next one is a little skew here. I don't recommend that. Always keep that at zero. This, this is basically the mouse rotation. So watch this. So this is like how fast it is for me to just move my mouse left to right, right? If I were to go here and crank it up to, let's say seven, look at how much faster that is. That's something you're gonna have to play with. I'm. I generally leave it around like two or three. Again, it depends on the size and the scale of your project. But again, I wanna point out these tips because I do think all these little things will help speed you up. All right, so just a recap, use WASD, use your fly mode here. It's gonna take a little, little time. It'll literally take you three minutes to get used to it. But once you do, you'll be a pro. Um, hit Z so you can hotkey around and you can easily focus on anything literally click an object, hit Z. You can also go from, from here, the outliner, and then hit Z. Uh, you don't need to click it. Um, so that's a nice little bonus. The other thing I'll point out, newbies sometimes do this. Let's say they accidentally hit a key on their keyboard and they freak out. F is the one that always gets people in trouble. They hit F and they're like, oh my God, what am I looking at? Just hit P and that switches you back to perspective. So what's actually happening is some people accidentally trigger these, that's that F, right? And these are your orthographic views, right? P is perspective and F8 is two point perspective. So just you know, pay attention to the verticals there. So you see how that kind of goes like that. F8 or two point, we'll keep it straight. So if you notice that you're like in a really weird view, just hit P um, and don't, don't worry too much. Uh, again, these will override any weird, you know, settings that occur. All right, anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you've got a question, please drop it in the comments. Happy to respond. And if you've made it this far, please consider subscribing. See you next time.